Today, we are going to make a beautiful alcohol ink floral heart on an old window. Now, I love repurposing old things and giving them new life. Um, I think it's a great way to, you know, reduce, reuse, recycle and be eco-friendly. But it's also a really cool thing too because this window that I'm working on today is actually 120 years old. So the wood on it is really aged and it's got a lot of character. The glass is kind of wavy. I love the fact that we're gonna give this old window some new life and turn it into like a really cool focal point. And we're gonna get started today. I'm gonna show you how to do this. So you can grab some alcohol inks, a can of compressed air, some alcohol, a Sharpie, some paper, in a little bit of time and we are gonna make some really beautiful roses and burst flowers and everything and I'm gonna show you how I create this and yeah hopefully you can make something for yourself or for a friend I love giving handmade gifts um, I think they're probably the best type of gift that you can give to somebody because it comes from your heart um, so come along let's make something gorgeous Okay, so what I had done was I took an Expo marker and on the opposite side of the glass, I had drawn a heart shape just to kind of keep my outline of my heart that I'm gonna be creating. Um, so I have that general shape that I'm gonna be following. And then after I did that, I put some paper down on the opposite side um, of the glass just so that you could see the color development of the inks and everything. It just makes it easier to see. So what we're gonna do for the rosettes is you take a blob of uh, alcohol ink and then your compressed air. And what you're gonna do is take that air and just very gently squeeze that little trigger. And you're gonna wanna go in a clockwise motion and then a counterclockwise motion, just spreading that air over the top of that ink splot to kind of spread the ink out and create the illusion of like rose petals, so to speak. So, you're just gonna repeat that over and over again with the different color inks, whatever your palette is that you're working with. Just using that real uh, light pressure on that compressed air can and just going around in a clockwise and counterclockwise direction. And what you're gonna wanna do is you'll see the ink kind of starts to spread and then kind of recede. You wanna just kind of blast out a little bit of the edges there so that you can kind of develop your rows a little bit with layers. So that other rows I'm going over now and creating more just by layering ink on top of ink. So you can do that, you know, I would say probably two to three times with the layering and the blowing around of the ink would be really good for this. Um, if you layer any more than three to four, four layers, it can get real dark and sticky and um, I just don't recommend doing it. Now this side of the glass that we're working on, this is actually the back side of the piece. So at the end, when we flip it over, what you're seeing here is going to be actually in reverse. So a little bit more of the rosettes. I am using a palette of mostly pinks, oranges, and a little deep purples, um, and some yellows too. So I'm just placing my big anchoring focal points. These roses are my focal points. Um, and I'm kind of spreading them out over the canvas so I have like a good base to work around when I start building the other flowers um, over there. Now this, this purple that I'm using, this purpley blue, it's called eggplant. Um, it seems really dark, but when you put it on the glass, it's real light. So this one was a little tricky to work with. So just keep that in mind if you decide to use eggplant as a color. Um, this color right here is a wild plum, which actually is probably one of my favorite colors. It's gorgeous. It's got that, that nice deep pinky purple tone. And then the other more reddish tones are um, cranberry, and then the deeper red is a currant. So that's my color palette that I'm working with. So as you can see, I'm just going through and layering the roses everywhere. edges aren't you know clean they're not neat they're not tidy I like that I think it gives it a little extra um, you know a little attitude a little bit of um, kind of devil may care type of thing here nothing is like all wrapped up neat with a bow it's character because we're on an old farmhouse building a farmhouse window it's got a lot of character as it is all right so these orange blobs are um, burst flowers. So you just take a drop of ink, position the can of air directly over that, and 
pull the trigger real fast to get a nice big burst of air that comes out right over the center of that dot. And you can see it just kind of explodes. You get this really vibrant dynamic shape that happens. And then I'm gonna go through, so I did orange first, and now in the center of each of these, I'm putting a little bit of a, a golden, um, I think it's called sunshine yellow, in the middle of it just to brighten those up. And then I'm taking that same sunshine yellow and I'm gonna make a rose, because I don't have any yellow roses yet, so I need to, need to brighten this up a little bit. clockwise and then clockwise and then you're just trying to those little areas where it gets dark around the edges just trying to spread that out and use those dark edges as like the, the edges of the petals of the flower I did the orange and now I'm layering the wild plum over the top of it just to give it a little bit of depth and give it the illusion of like overlapping petals and it's, it's a fun way to, to make a, a cool flower so try that out with a couple different colors see what color combination you like and just have fun like playing with that air can process is obviously sped up. Um, start to finish, everything took about two, a little over two hours to lay down all of the florals and then I go in here with um, some greenery too and then the outlines as well. You'll see that a little bit further down the road. But yeah, about two and a half hours start to finish to get this project finished. flowers I'm just going in and I'm putting little center drops in the middle of each and now I'm adding the greenery so I'm using a real light green here I don't want to overpower everything and I'm just dripping it into areas that need it on the bottom of part of the heart they're kind of, the heart is kind of like resting in a bunch of leaves so I'm putting a few layers down just to get the first um, layers dried before I add more. And you can see I'm just using like a quick gestural line and blowing out that line, taking the air canister at an angle and blowing upwards. So I'm creating um, the shape of the leaves that way. And you do want to let that dry in between um, layering so that you can kind of let everything form up before you go over it again. And then in the center of the heart and in between the florals, I'm going with some of that green too, just kind of fill in those blank spaces. It's just awesome to see how it just kind of all comes together. All right, so next up we have outline work. So I've reversed the window. So this is actually the back side. So all the inks are underneath the glass right now and we're working on the top side and we're gonna use a Sharpie. Handy dandy Sharpie, you gotta love these things. And what we're gonna do is, you can leave your heart just like this. I think it's actually quite beautiful just the way it is. But I was making this for a client, so she wanted the outlines done on her piece. So. I'm just taking a Sharpie, I'm going in and I'm following as a guideline some of the ink that I had laid down as my shape of my leaves. And I'm just drawing these little leaf shapes. Um, and you wanna use a fresh Sharpie, like make sure it's brand new cause you don't wanna have any of that ink like run out cause then you don't get that nice deep black tone. So just go ahead and start, I start with the leaves first um, at the bottom and then I work my way into the florals. But just create your leaf shape. Um, 
I like to do this leaf shape. It's pretty simple and easy, and it's actually kind of how I doodle. <laughs> so it comes very natural to me. So play around with shape as well, because your shape might be different than my shape, which is totally fine. Um, and I encourage it to be different. But go ahead and just kind of add your leaf shape. center part of the leaves as well and then I'll go and add like the little um, tendrils that come off that center bit. Just work slowly, take your time, be in the moment, you're creating something, it should be relaxing, it should be fun, don't focus too much on making it perfect because those imperfections are sometimes what make it really cool. For the florals, I really don't adhere to any real flower. <laughs> I mean, they might be real, but um, I just like to have fun and play around with texture. So I use lots of stipling um, and I just start creating petal shapes and I'm working with the shape that's already down on what the ink did and I'm just kind of enhancing it and outlining it with that Sharpie. So the floral or the roses that you see, I make kind of like the rose shapes where the petals kind of overlap. Um, other ones, those burst flowers are really good for creating like little daisy shapes. Um, I like the ranunculus flower. So those have lots of layers and I'll get into that a little bit later, but I just have a lot of fun creating different types of flowers and just kind of looking at it going, oh, what, what do you need to be? And then going in there and doing a little stipling and then creating more of the little petals that, that form off of that. It's, it's just a lot of fun to kind of see what happens. Whatever pops into my head is usually how I kind of go. I really don't have a plan ever for projects like this because, I mean, I kind of have a plan because I drew the heart. <laughs> but just seeing what develops organically as you go along that is the fun part of this project and of art in general, is just kind of going with your own creative um, intuition and kind of adhering to the rules, but going way outside of the box if you need to. How often do you get to do that in, in life, you know? That's why art is so therapeutic. And with the florals too, I like to keep the little center, I'll do like little dots, and then I'll do little like spiky things that come off the dots to kind of incorporate different textures within the, the floral. And that's just a fun little a tip to try next time you're doodling flowers. And then too, a lot of these um, pieces, like some of the florals overlap. So don't try to make like a flower and then a flower and a flower. Um, try to make a flower and then if there's a flower underneath it, kind of make that one fit into wherever that space is so that you're not just having all these separate flowers all over the place, they kind of overlap one another. And this little guy, this is more of like a square shaped petal and they're staggered around the edge so you have like this layered kind of effect that goes on. It's kind of like a marigold almost. does take a little time just because you're going individual flower piece by flower piece <laughs> so if you need to take a break walk away if you feel yourself getting tired um, or antsy like you want to get it done that is usually my cue to walk away from the project before you get sloppy and destroy it so if I'm feeling like antsy like oh I just can't wait to get this done um, I seriously will just put down whatever you know, piece I'm working on and just walk away for however long it takes me to not be antsy <laughs> for it. Because I've destroyed a lot of um, paintings and portraits and stuff just by wanting to get it finished. Um, usually when that happens, it's just your brain is like overloaded and tired um, and you just need a break.
just little circles starting in the center of a floral and just rotating their way outward. We just add a leaf or a little like branch with leaves on it too. That's a nice way to incorporate a different type of texture in there. And with the outlining, we are giving our piece a little bit more structure. With if you don't use the outlining, you know it's just it's softer, it's more you know ephemeral. <laughs> um, it's very light. Um, the the black outlines really kind of anchor everything down and you get a different look out of it. So it's kind of fun to play around with the contrast of this real softness of these inks and then the real hard lines of the Sharpie. And then after you're finished with your piece, I suggest taking a Rust-Oleum gloss clear coat and on both sides of the glass, just take a very light coat um, and let it dry for about five minutes and then take another very light coat on both sides of the glass to seal in and UV protect um, all your hard work. And then um, of course this is glass, so when you hang it on a wall, if you're hanging it on a wall that's white, it's gonna look fantastic. If you hang it on a wall that's like a navy blue, all those bright colors are gonna be kind of pointless because <laughs> you won't be able to see it on a dark wall because it's glass. So one of my suggestions that I have for you is on the opposite side, the, the back side of the piece. Um, after you do that Rust-Oleum clear coat, you can take um, like a, a white acrylic paint and paint the back of it. Just be patient when you do that. You could probably even take a um, white spray paint and just hit the back of your piece with that white color and essentially you'll be able to create a white light background so your colors really do pop. The only thing I have to say is when you do that, make sure you Take your time, use a light hand, and work in layers, so just don't like blast it, because then you can really make it not look that good. So you just have to take your time with that. But you should have a really beautiful piece. So that's it, guys. I hope you had fun following me along on this whole journey of making something really beautiful and bright and cheery. I hope that you try it out and make it in your home. If you do, share it. Tag me on social media, at Timberlane Studio. I love to see what people create, especially when it comes to like, ideas that I've cooked up myself <laughs> but come along next episode where I will be tackling some murder hornets actually they're not murder hornets it's a it's a copper honeybee <laughs> we're gonna make this next episode so click the subscribe button so you don't miss an episode and thanks for coming along on my creative journey <laughs>